Hey, the Jungle Explorer here, and today I'm going to be showing you this Pinty rifle scope that was sent to me by the Pinty Company, and it's a 6x24 power rifle scope. So let's go ahead and break it out of the box here. Um, they actually just sent it in the box, so they shipped it in its own box here. It comes with a set of rings. Let's pull these out of the box real quick, just for review purposes. Okay, look, they're uh, spigotini rails. Looks like some nice little rings there. So we'll go ahead and pull the scope out, see what it looks like. Unravel it here. Pull that out. It's got nice uh, end caps here. Pop open end caps. It's got a sunshade. I'm going to pull that off to get the sunshade off there. A nice sunshade there. Okay. Let's move the stuff out of the way. All right. Let's pull these end caps off for a little bit. Look at it. It's uh, got it's illuminated reticle, got green and red. And let me see here, it is etched glass, so you can see the reticle without the illumination, so you can you don't have to have a battery. Has a battery in here, I believe, in this compartment right here. No, no battery? Hmm. I guess I'll have to get a battery. Let me see if there's one in the box. Here. Don't see a battery in the box, so I'm going to have to get a battery for it. All right, well, that's okay. I'm not a big, huge fan of the illuminated reticles myself. Uh, I prefer the, the, the regular ones, but if you were shooting at night, it would be good. I just got to get the right battery for it. Make sure it isn't sitting here. I think I've got some. Anyways, i uh, got a adjustable objective here. goes from... 10 yards to all the way up here to infinity, 150 yards. We'll see how that works. I like these here. Got some elevation and windage adjustments there. Okay, let's move this here. Move it around. It is, it is stiff to move, but it, it's, you're not going to accidentally bump it and knock it off. It does move smooth, smoothly, but it takes some force to do that. Yeah, Penty 6x24. It looks like a nice scope here. You can... Uh, Got to take this ring off here if you want to put the sunshade on. Through the sunshade on there. So it looks good. Well, the main thing about these scopes is how well they do, how clear they are. So I'm going to be mounting this scope to a brand new Thompson Center Compass 308 rifle, and uh, we'll get her out in the field and see if we can sight her in. All right, so let's get at that. All right, we got the Thompson Center Compass 308 here, brand new, still got the sticker on it, right out of the box. You can get this off of cabelas.com. Alright, so let's go ahead and put these scope mounts on. Even comes with the little Allen wrench to uh, tighten it up with. that down tight we're going to be shooting some 308s and we want them to be tight all right good go ahead and let's take these tops off
I love working on my Catwell lead sled here because it gives me a nice little drawer down here to store all the stuff I take off so I don't lose it. And let's go ahead and put this scope on here. Right there. Provides a nice stable platform. Now once I'm going to just put these on lightly so I can adjust the scope to the eye relief. We've got a long scope here. And when you're installing a scope you want to make sure you've got the right eye relief on it so we'll just go ahead and put these in lightly and then adjust that okay so i've got gone ahead and got my eye relief right and got the uh, reticle vertical lined up with the the gun so we're going to go ahead and just tighten up i don't like to tighten up too much on one side try not to warp the tube so i kind of crisscross at the start now you want to make sure your spacing is the is equal on both sides right here. There's a little gap between the top of the ring and the bottom of the ring. And uh, I like to just kind of go do like half turns to get it tighten up finger tight with the, the tall side. Do the same thing on this side. Just half turns. That way you're not tightening up too much in one spot because you don't want to warp your tube here. All right, now once you get that done, we'll come back and put a little more torque on it. Make sure that tight all the way around. Same thing on this side. You don't want your scope moving, so you just really how you install your scope is going to really predict overall performance all right we're looking good scopes installed lined up now it's time to get it out to the range and give it a test Okay, so I'm ready to test out this beautiful scope here and on this brand new Thompson Center Compass 308 and I'm going to be sighting it in initially at 25 yards uh, to get it on paper and near the bullseye then I'm going to move the target out to 150 yards so it shouldn't take me more than a few rounds to get this on paper at 25 yards and then we'll move it out to the long target.
Okay, so I got it sighted in uh, on paper around the bullseye at 25 yards, and that should put me a little high. I'm actually sighting long range, down range at 150 yards, which is my normal shooting range um, for this caliber of weapon, the 308. So I want to sight in at 150 yards. Uh, hunting rifles are not made to be shot many times over and over. The barrels are thinner on them, they have no cooling. So they get hot. This barrel is very hot. I've shot it six times. And when these barrels get really hot like this, because they're not designed to be shot over and over and over again like an AR-15, they will start to move on you a little bit. So you have to give your barrel a break, let it cool down, or you can use a wet rag and you can cool it off, um, get it down, get the temperature down on it. Because the hotter it gets, the more it's going to move around. When the metal heats up, it's going to expand and you're going to lose your accuracy. And since we're shooting at 150 yards, we want really good accuracy. And so a lot of people will just keep shooting and their gun will consistently get more inaccurate because they'll let their barrel get too hot. At this time, it's also good to run a cloth through it. So I'm going to run a cloth through the gun and uh, just kind of clean out some of the fouling while the barrel's cooling down. If you're going to do a lot of shooting, I recommend that you get a really good cleaning rod. This is a solid one piece Teflon coated cleaning rod. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of cheap kits out there and they'll work. But if you can find your really good cleaning rod, that's what you want to use on your high quality rifles. Now to clean it, the first thing we want to do is take the bolt out. Okay, so on the uh, Thompson Center compass, there's a slide release right here. Lift it up, pull it back, push down, and the bolt comes out. Now you could go right in with a cleaning rod, but I like this little cleaning rod guide that I've got here. This makes sure that you're not going to cause any damage to your, your bullet chamber. Let's go ahead and push it in, bring it back, and that locks it into place right there. So now you have a guide. It's going to guide this right up the barrel. Get you some good cleaning cloths. You know, we're not going to put anything on these cloths right now because we're not de doing a deep cleaning. We're just, um, we're just going to knock some of the fouling off while we're letting the barrel cool. This is really important during the side end stage. Go ahead, push it in. Pu push it all the way through. Do not try to bring it back until you've got it all the way through and then pull back all the way out okay I'm gonna go ahead and pull that cloth out and I'm gonna double it back the opposite direction so I get two cleans out of the same cloth pull it about halfway we'll insert it again holding at the back end of the rod so that the rod spins as it goes through and we'll come back. All right, that second time came out a lot cleaner. I'm just going to twist it a little bit. I'm going to run it through one more time. We've knocked most of the fouling out. Okay. And back through again. Since this is a brand new gun, it's not very dirty. That's all we need. We'll get we'll pull our our uh, cleaning rod guide out. Set it here in the drawer. We'll go ahead and put our bolt back in. Push down that button there. Bolt slides in. We're good. All right. We don't have any ammo in here, so let's go ahead and load our magazine again. And put it in the gun. All right. We got a shell ready to go. Line up here. The wind picked up. All right.
Okay, so you can see on the target there, I did manage to get three pretty close to the bullseye at 150 yards. I have a little wind today, and this uh, Thompson Center Compass is not a bad rifle, but it's a 308, and it's got this nylon stock, and it really could do with a, a much heavier stock to kind of balance it. I couldn't really get it to zero really well until I, I really grabbed hold of the stock, sucked it into my shoulder, and, and just held it really hard. Then I was able to get those three shots because it was kind of jumping around um, until I did that. But once I stabilized the gun really well, I was able to get, you know, at 150 yards, oh, three bullets, I would say, in about almost a one-inch uh, circle, so that's not bad. Um, you know, plenty good enough for hunting, for, for deer hunting, pig hunting. Yeah, that's a dead animal at that range. The scope held up good. I put 40 rounds through it. I put uh, 20 of the Winchester PowerPoints through it and 20 of the tool ammo, uh, full metal jackets through it, and the scope did not break. The crosshairs didn't come loose. The glass is still solid in it. And 308 is a pretty powerful weapon, so it held up to that pretty good. Um, I've got no complaints. The glass on it could be just a smidgen clearer. It's not, uh, you know, Canon optics quality but uh i was able to at 150 yards see where i was hitting without the need of a spotting scope so there you go if you're able to tell that it's clear enough um to to use for hunting so the scope feels really well built it feels solid in its operation smooth um the turrets could have a little more click when you turn them you can't really you have to be real sensitive to feel the click there i like the uh it comes with its own clip on uh scope caps you know and it has the sunshade on it so for the price i think it's a pretty good deal so i've seen some 6x24 budget range scopes that were just total garbage this is not total garbage this is a 308 um and i've put about 40 rounds through it the scope is still holding it's not broken inside so that's 40 308 ammos and i have it locked down here is in the stand so you know that's pretty good i was expecting it to break it you know, because I've had some cheaper scopes that uh, a 308 would break. It didn't happen. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I answered some questions about this scope. Um, it is a budget scope, guys. Don't expect, uh, you know, Nikon or, or Leopold or Redfield optics on it, but they are plenty usable. I will place a link to this in the description of the video in case you're interested in it. In it and uh, below that will be additional links to all the other products that I use in this video in case you're interested in those well I hope you enjoyed this video if you have please like subscribe and comment remember share my videos on social media to help me grow the jungle explorer channel I really appreciate it until next time this is the jungle explorer signing out